You're, you're, you're listening to the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. We are live right now on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. You just heard some behind the scenes, Brandon Falco, people trying to get some free shirts from Falco. Uh, Carl Coulange for the Sports Hit List, by the fans and for the fans. Thank you for joining us this afternoon and spending your afternoon with us as we talk about sports, what we love to do. Let me introduce my panel. Brandon Falco from the Falco Takeaway. You got to give out some free shirts, man. How you doing? What up, what up, what up? We have Ziggy Zig, who's also the co-founder of the Sports Hit List. Ziggy, how you doing, man? What's going on? And we have the pastor and also self-proclaimed co-founder of the Ain't Sports no Hit List. <laughs> give me <laughs> my Mike credit, Miller. Please. Mike Miller's driving to, to home so he can make it to another segment. Mike, thanks for joining us on your drive, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate you, brother, as always, man. So my first question just to ask, uh, I have a sports hit list question of the day. Um, the NFL returns tomorrow. Can we get a bold prediction for the NFL from the panel? Falco, bold oh, prediction for the NFL. My homeboy, MVP, touchdown leader, passing yard leader, Super Bowl MVP. If that's Again, all, 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 okay, so all. back to back. Okay, okay. Oh, Ziggy, bold prediction for the NFL this season. I don't care for the NFL, bro. So on to the next. <laughs> okay, Mike Miller, bold prediction. I know what you're going to say. Uh, it's already yeah, verbatim. Come on, man. You already know. Don't ask me about no NFL. You know I have to <laughs> ask you the question of the day. It's you only fair, brother. It's, it's, it's only fair. Uh, wait, 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 wait. What's the question? Who's going to win the Super Bowl? No, a bold prediction for the NFL for this Oh, season. I got another one. I got one more. The Giants what? will make the playoffs. Get the hell out of here first. One more, <laughs> one more bold prediction. One more bold prediction. The Ravens will not win a playoff game again this season. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh, so wow. let's dive into the NBA. Last night, the Los Angeles Lakers defeat Los Angeles Lakers defeated the Houston Rockets by a final score of one twelve to one hundred two. LeBron James finished with thirty six point seven rebounds, five assists, AD twenty six fifteen and six. Rajon Rondo, 21, 9, and 1. And we also have James Harden, 33, 9, and 9. Russell Westbrook, 38, and 6. Mike, what did you see from game uh, game, game three? Man, I'm not going to lie to you, Carl. I felt in game three with, with that game, I felt the same way I felt with Denver Clippers. It felt like the, the Lakers was like, oh, that's cute. Y'all staying close with us? All right, fourth quarter, let's stop playing and blow them out. Because that's that's exactly what they did in game two. It was like, oh, this is nice. We're gonna make it look good, and then we'll blow you out again. So I like I think the Lakers are clearly better. Basically, whatever Houston's two best, because like you just said, James Harden and Russell Westbrook both had 30. They still got blown out in the fourth. So I think the Lakers just whatever they do best go uh defeats anything Houston can do at their best. So I, I think this series for more or less is over. Okay, Falco, you had some uh, comments prior to this game about Rajon Rondo. Uh, coach is coming for you. Don't worry. He'll be I here know. shortly. Uh, what are your thoughts about game three as the, as the Lakers win uh, by 10? First and foremost, the star showed out. My guy LeBron James looked like uh, the Miami days, looked like the Cleveland days last night in the first half with 29 first half points. He really set the tone for the rest of the team. He didn't get much production in the first half from everyone else, but once LeBron took his foot off the gas in the third quarter, Anthony Davis really carried the load, even though the Rockets and P.J. Tucker did a great job defending him, doubling him right when he got the ball. I thought he played really well. And I know I killed Rajon Rondo, but he played phenomenal in the second half, and we saw a playoff Rondo even though. I thought maybe his best days were over, but he was sensational as well. And Russell Westbrook was really the key, I think, why the Rockets ended up losing, were getting blown out in the fourth quarter, like Mike said, because he was attacking the rim in the beginning of the game. When he's attacking the rim and facilitating the shooters, he's one of the best players in the NBA. Once he starts thinking he's Steph Curry, he becomes a liability of a teammate, which is exactly what I saw once the fourth quarter came. And what I didn't like that I want to touch on real quick, the Lakers in the beginning of that game, really for the first three quarters, they were playing to the Rockets' strength, which was push, pushing the pace, which I don't like that. I want you to slow the game down against the Rockets because the Rockets are pretty liable. They're not a great half-court team. Mike D'Antoni, a terrible coach, doesn't know how to run an offense, doesn't call any sets. It's basically just one-on-one -on -one iso ball with Harden or Westbrook. And when they're pushing the pace and they're shooting threes, they're one of the best teams in the NBA. Once you slow them down, they become very liable, and that's what we saw in the fourth quarter, ultimately why the Lakers really took this win. 
Ziggy, what are your thoughts about uh, game three? Um, can the Rockets bounce back in four and, and tie this up and actually make this a series? Or is it over? No, no, no. I don't think there's any tying up. This series is over. Um, I was just honestly just taking my time to look and see if P.J. Tucker was going to lock down AD. I'm clearly not seeing that, as we had some people on the show talking that nonsense a couple of days ago. Bring him back, Carl. Uh, you better bring that kid back on. No, but you know what? <laughs> you know, as the resident media man, I'm waiting. I'm waiting till the series is over. Don't you notice? <laughs> I had him on beforehand, but I'm waiting until we have enough evidence for him to explain himself. That's all I'm that's doing. Fair. Yeah, yeah, right? that's that. That was a ridiculous that's take because as we saw, um, AD had a big game. Not a big game, but he had a, he had a great game, 26 and 15. Um, LeBron, um, with the blocks, that was what was really amazing to me. Like he was playing with a different yeah, kind of true. energy, a different kind of effort. Like, he was determined not to lose this game. I don't see the Rockets winning this series. I, I don't think any, any of the four of us here on this panel right now had the Rockets winning this series. Um, Lakers got it. Lakers will be going on to the Western Conference Finals. All right. Moving along to the Eastern Conference, the Milwaukee Bucks, number one seed, best team in the league record-wise, was eliminated yesterday by the Miami Heat 4-1. Um, to one. Giannis did not play in game five. I know Brandon has a lot to say about this, but Mike, is this what you expected? Did you see the Bucks folding in the second round, or did you actually have them making it out the Eastern Conference? Be honest. I said that this is why I always gave a caveat to the Bucks. I said they should. I never went all in on them, and this is exactly why, <laughs> because I knew that there were, the weaknesses with them always end up showing up in the playoffs, there's always a great defensive team that stops them. And this was another example of it, of how it, it's because what right now, everybody's just blaming Coach Bud, but it's and also it's not either or it's Coach Bud and Giannis. Sure. Giannis's weaknesses and Coach Bud's weaknesses both show up in the playoffs. The fact that Bud doesn't know that his his best player can't shoot, put him in the post is we lost Mike? Yeah, I think we might have lost him a little bit. That was bit. a good take, too. Yeah, Damn. He, he was going in. I'm sure he'll yeah. be back. Ziggy, what, do you, what what are your thoughts on that? So my thoughts on that series is, um, as you know, we did the Eastern Conference um, semifinals. Shot. It's series. just more of oh. oh, here he is. There's, There's more, it's more of what we expected. So, no, I'm not shocked at all. No. Okay. Go ahead, Ziggy. So as I was saying, um, I guess I'll continue where Mike was at. Um. This uh, I didn't expect for them to roll over like this, um, but I did have the Miami Heat beating the ball, um, not the Boston Celtics, the Miami Heat beating the Milwaukee Bucks, uh, mainly because of that reason that Giannis, he's a skillful athlete. Don't get me, um, don't get me wrong, he's a skillful athlete, but no jump shot, no real post game. Miami exposed him, and I know he did a great job coming in with those 18 points. Um, I believe what game was that? Game four? I, I can't know. I don't know exactly what game. I think it was game game three. Yeah, 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 well, yeah. Before he Giannis, got hurt, when he got hurt? Yeah, he, he got hurt he in game did, four. Yeah, he did a good – right, right, he did a good job um, on that front. But on top of that, he was exposed. Uh, Chris Middleton at points showed up, and then at points he wasn't there. And I'm I'm highly disappointed in Eric Bledsoe because I feel like he was a non-factor in this entire series. I thought he would do something um, in this series. But this is, what, this is what was expected. You're going up against Eric Spolstra – uh, Jimmy Butler, these guys, the Miami Heat, they know how to plan. They know how to defensively plan. And they came up with a great game plan to neutralize the Milwaukee Bucks. Falco, the floor is yours. I already know what you're going to say verbatim. Giannis is overrated. You have uh, Mike, Budenholzer's, Mike Budenholzer's overrated. Chris Middleton's overrated. The whole Bucks organization's overrated. Get rid of the whole team. Trade everybody. Go for it. I got so much to say. I don't even know where to start. I'm going to try to keep this as short as possible. But – I just want everyone to keep the same energy when I came and you, Carl, specifically, when I said that the Bucks were never title contenders before the playoffs began. I knew mm -hmm. they were fraud. I knew they didn't have any title aspirations because Budenhoser is a terrible coach. Giannis is not a closer. Middleton is not a max contract worthy guy. Let's talk about oh, the, here. There's four reasons why I said they wouldn't get out of the East, and that's exactly why they didn't get out of the East. Number one, Budenhoser is a terrible coach. We saw last year when he got exposed by Nick Nurse and Kawhi Leonard with a great defensive game plan, building the wall, and they had no answer for him. Didn't know how to get Giannis uh, in the game late in the stretch. Same thing with Middleton. Budenhoser not only couldn't make an in-game adjustment, couldn't make a game-to-game -game adjustment four straight games. Now let's go to Giannis. He's averaged 30 points under 30 minutes, which is basically why he's getting the MVP this year. 
which is an historic regular season, deserves every bit of it. Honestly, should be unanimous MVP. But once playoff time starts, we know superstars are going to need to play 40-plus minutes a game, yes, even close to 45 minutes a game. And I don't want to hear any excuses, especially with how much rest they had. LeBron James, for example, averages 42 minutes per game for his entire postseason, and he's in year 17. Giannis Antetokounmpo, I believe, is in year 7, and he still averaged, averaged, I think, 36 points a game – I mean, excuse me, 36 minutes a game this postseason, and it still wasn't enough for the Bucs. Also, they don't have a closer. You can't win. You can't win a, a conference or a title without a closer. We saw Giannis is clearly not a closer because he can't shoot. I'm not educating anyone by saying Giannis can't shoot. We all know this. But find a way to get involved down the stretch, whether it's playmaking, playing, have a post game, which Mike said, which I've been preaching for months and months now, and he can't get involved in the game because. The Heat build the wall. Great job by Spo. I thought he did a phenomenal job. Whoever was on him, whether it was Bam, Jimmy Butler, Jay Crowder, there was always two Heat defenders waiting for whichever way Giannis was going to drive or spin, which is why he was locked up. Chris Middleton, a max contract player. Again, he's not a closer either. And another thing, which is, again, has to do with not having a closer, they are not used to playing tight games. 37 of their 55 wins this season came by double digits or more. When they're playing with the lead, playing with tempo, they're one of the best teams in the NBA. Once the pace slows down, they have no half-court offense because Budenholzer is a terrible coach. Giannis is not, <laughs> has basically no half-court offense. And Middleton is doesn't have is not a closer either. Yeah, we see he could create his own shot. He had a great game four in the third quarter and overtime, but he's proven time and time again he can't close. If we have time later in the segment, I want to talk about the future of the Bucks, what they should do, but – I'll, I'll let the floor for you for, for now. Are you done? You're good? Yeah. And unless it was, <laughs> if we have more time to talk about it, I'd love to get into that. Right, right. Did you get it off your chest? Did, did you get it off your chest? Yeah. He was really I, I, mad I, about the Bucks. He really I'll, was. I'd love to touch on what what they need to do this with this offseason, not this summer. This offseason, if you have time, but. Okay. Uh, moving along to the Eastern Conference, the, the rest of the Eastern Conference semifinals, the Boston Celtics can close out tonight against the Toronto Raptors. What needs to be done in order to – not to have it to a game seven, Ziggy. Uh, you're talking about uh, the Celtics? The Celtics, yeah. What do they have? What must they do to close it out? What must they do? Aside, continue aside, to, yeah, aside from the obvious of winning, I'm saying in terms of... Continue continue to neutralize Pascal Siakam. Um, I'm not going to sit here and say he's been exposed, but there's definitely some um, improvement that he should be looking to do, um, looking to improve his game, and um, more so the aspect of shooting and possibly getting a go-to move in the post. So... Um, they've been doing a good job neutralizing. As I told you before, Jalen Brown has been locking him up. He hasn't been able to do anything uh, this particular series. Um, so what you have to do is continue to neutralize Pascal Siakam, allow Van Fleet and Kyle Lowry to get their shots off and just keep him in check. And you as you guys, as in the Celtics, you, Carl, you guys continue to put your game plan together, give the ball to Jason Tatum, let him kill Kemba Walker, oh, my God. Kemba Walker is amazing. Mike, I'm going to give it to you, Mike. Yo, I'm going to just say this real quick. A couple of years ago, I know for sure, I think there was a time me and Mike was arguing Kyrie Irving, Kemba Walker, and I didn't believe in Kemba. And I think that's there's a reason why is because he was playing in Charlotte. You can't really see him. But once he got on the Boston and once I paid attention to his game, that man is an assassin. Between him, Jalen Brown, Marcus Smart, Jason Tatum, the Toronto Raptors don't stand a chance. Listen, I love listening to a Knicks fan b- boast about my team. It just makes me feel good about myself. Uh, sir, I'm a Kawhi Leonard fan. <laughs> oh, Mike, oh. Mike, could you elaborate? Mike, you've been telling us for years about cardiac Kemba. Since we were at St. Francis, that's nothing that's been the same narrative for years. You said they came out the same draft. You made a video, and they crucified you about it. Um, we can have that debate later on, but just talk about uh, can Toronto push this to a game seven? Logically, could this happen? Toronto can. I just don't think that they will. Don't, to, to be honest, let's just look at the series for what it was. Toronto got their one win based on the fact that – based on a lucky shot. That's what, Let's call it what it was. It was a lucky shot. So they got their one win off of that. I think emotionally Jalen was messed up from that in game four. That's why I lost game four. Game five, they just reminded Toronto, we're better than you in every position. And so since we're better than you in every position, we should be able to dominate you at every position. And that's what they did. So I think Toronto can only if Boston falls asleep. But I think Brad Stevens get the. I think I might have lost him again. Kimba is looking like 
We saw it in UConn. We saw it at Rice High School. Kimba has always been a clutch performer. And so now it's just going to put the stamp tonight and get him out of there. So I think it's over for Toronto. Mm -hmm. All right, flipping it over. Brandon, what are your thoughts on the uh, Clippers and Nuggets series? Uh, Clippers lead 2-1. Kawhi having a block with one finger. I don't think I've ever seen that in a highlight, that he used one finger to block a shot. What's your thoughts on that, Paco? The series was over before it started. The Clippers really could turn it up whenever they want. They're so deep. Kawhi Leonard is playing phenomenal. George Paul is playing pretty well himself after that brutal first-round series. He had those few stretches. But they're just so deep, so lethal. I don't think the Nuggets just have the veteran presence to compete with a team like the Clippers. They only have one guy above the age of 30, which is Paul Millsap. I think they're just too top-heavy with Jamal Murray and Jokic. I just don't think they could carry a heavy enough load to compete with a team like the Clippers. I still think they're fatigued from uh, the first-round series coming back from 3-1, but this series is no match. The Clippers are easily going to the Western Conference Finals, no doubt. Okay, and let me just go back real quick upon Brandon. You were talking about, you know, what can we do to fix the Bucks? Giannis is a free agent. Uh, next season, not this season, but next season, they still have Chris Middleton under contract, Eric Bledsoe. I was listening to uh, Brandon for uh, the video you shared on First Take about Kendrick Perkins about how Mike Boonehorst should be fired. Uh, just look at his track record. Um, Paul African Paul Miss Cleo has said this since he was in Atlanta. He said, you know, all these things about him. Um, what's the fix for the Bucks? Should they, you know, move on from Mike? Should they trade Giannis before he leaves potentially to get, you know, should they get something in return for him? What's next, Ziggy? Well, we don't know anything so far because Giannis hasn't been saying anything about what he wants to do. He's been very tight. Yeah. Like, I'm hearing yeah, a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, that. hold on. Wait, we have breaking yeah, news. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, yeah. Coach is in the building yeah. real quick. Coach, you got five <laughs> minutes, brother. NFL team is trying yeah, to get yeah, in. Yeah, I know what you got shit. to say. Ah, man, this is, this is wrestling. I'm going to give pay homage to wrestling when a special guest kicks through the door. <laughs> <laughs> you know who I am. Falco, you know who I am. <laughs> I'm here for you. You came Yo, call. Swing that brother. question to Mac since he came in late. You know what I mean? We here. Well, well, well. I'm gonna let Mac cook because Mac has it. Because last show, uh-huh. I know Mac took his notes about Rajon Rondo and Brandon Falco felt about Rondo, and Rondo came off the bench with 21 points. So Mac, the floor is yours, brother. Go for it. <laughs> Listen, and this, this, I, and you know what? I, I text this to Falco. I think he has potential in this game, and you know me, call. I don't, I don't just say that to a lot of people. You know what I mean? I really think he has potential. Because he has that kind of uh, opinion or that kind of personality where you either love it or you hate it. And you need right. that in this kind of line. You need to be hated or you need to be superly loved. There's no in-between. But when you're hated and you throw out those different comments, I'm going to come back for you. So look what I talked about. We talked about adjustments. Let me show you how coaches adjust. Let's look at the first half, right? First half, 64 points, I believe, or 65 points. 64, the- 61 Rockets. 64 points for the Rockets, right? Do you think when they went into that huddle, I mean, they went into the into the locker room, it was all the players just talking? Or do you think the coaching staff got together and started talking about adjustments that needed to be made on defense, especially in transition, and how they started double teaming and guarding Harden in the half court? Who do you think I, came up with that plan? My, my take? Yeah. I, I think LeBron did, because I don't think Vogel has the IQ to really realize that. You are bugging. No, no, no. It's okay, That's... but you are bugging. LeBron has so much going on in that game. I know he's going to see little different things, but as a person who played, and I'm not trying to throw it out there like I'm better than anyone, but as a person who played, you have suggestions as a player, but you're not going to see it the way coaches see it. They're looking at five different positions. They're looking at ten different positions, because they're looking with the offenses also. And big shout-out to assistant coaches, because we don't know. Maybe an assistant caught it and had to tell it to Vogel. But now let's get to the main man, Rondo. And I know people was like, oh, he had one good game. Listen, this is a seven-game series. One or two games determine whether or not you're moving on to the semi, to the uh, finals, to the conference finals. That's all it takes. If Chris Middleton plays the way he played in game one and two, one, two that man. series is different. If Jimmy Butler plays the way he played in game three and four, where he didn't play really well, and plays like that in game one and two, that series is different. It takes a momentum. And we saw the momentum swing in the favor of the Lakers because a veteran who's been there, there's nothing that could prepare you for life than what you've been through already in every avenue. And Rondo has been on that level, knows how to win, know how to lead a team. People don't like it. And I know I'm over. This is going to be the last, last comment. People say LeBron just makes his way and he has to control every aspect of the game. No, that's not true. He does it when he doesn't trust the point guard. 
He trusts Rondo. He allows Rondo to take the ball. I can move off the ball. I can cut. I can go to the offensive glass. I can save a couple minutes on defense because maybe that's what's leading him to play better defense in the fourth quarter because he doesn't have to run the entire offense throughout the entire game because he has a backup point guard and not Danny Green or, or, or Pope or, or the Caruso. guy with – or Caruso, the guy who needs to go get some hair plants. You know, he, he actually has a point guard <laughs> who, who, who's experienced and has won some championships. So I just want you to – you don't have to apologize, but just apologize. Do I time to rebuttal? No, you don't, Brandon. We don't get to the next We got to the next Yo, listen. Yo, listen. Yo, I need more time back on here. We need more time back on here. Yes, I'll have you guys. Yo, listen. Yo, I just want to real. Yo, call real quick. Mac, yo, don't call that no more. Mac came to preach just now. He was preaching just now. Can you get a rebuttal? He came to preach. I got to go, guys. Hold on, last time call. I was literally on a staff meeting, and I kid you, serious work. And I was like, "Yo, I gotta cook." As soon as the staff meeting came, I text, I text call, let me in late. I'm busting through the door. Let, <laughs> let me in, bro. So, okay, in. okay, I want to post game live. I, I want to post game live. I need more. I need more to talk about. Brandon, there's plenty right, to talk right. about. I'll try to get you on post game live. Mike, I'll see you at five o'clock for the segment. That's four o'clock your time because you're on a different time zone than us. Guys, make sure you tune in. We got Scotty Pippen, star superstar, coming later. Ooh. You're watching the sports. Uh, you're watching the sports hit list live on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Let me bring in my football team to talk about some NFL. Uh, let's see who we have here. We have the football god Kenny Irby coming in. Kenny, how you doing, sir? Good, man. How is everybody? We have Travis, Mr. Box Office, is in the building. Travis, how you doing, sir? Going on, fellas. It's a and good we day. Have the New York native Florida resident, Mr. Ricardo Etienne, is in the building. Rick, how you doing, man? Hell yo, what's up, fellas? How y'all doing? Okay, Travis, let me ask you this question. Uh, professor, question here for you, man. Okay, you get an A or a B. How excited are you for the NFL season to return? Are you a kid on Christmas or are you a virgin on prom night? <laughs> <laughs> virgin on prom night. <laughs> <laughs> how excited talk about it how excited are you man for listen man this is this is chris football eve right here tomorrow is the big day we are back i was skeptical if the day would come if we go i don't know if we're gonna make it to the end but guess what i'm gonna enjoy the moment while we here man it has been how long i don't even know and we ain't had no preseason so we just diving right into the big show and i'm ready for it all right, Rick, same question for you. Kid on Christmas or virgin on prom night for football? Hey, listen, I'm going to go kid on Christmas just, just because <laughs> the I, Listen, listen. Your prom night was whack. <laughs> no, here's the thing. Just because I'm, I'm, I'm stacking the deck, man, your odds of scoring are way better on Christmas, man. You know, more, more opportunities. So, uh, yeah, man, I'm looking forward to it. Um, like, like you said, it's been a long time. I, again, the NFL has had the the – the blessing and the opportunity to be able to skate this entire process um, as long as possible compared to every single other league. So I'm super excited to see what they've been able to put together um, in an effort to, to bring us the presentation of football in this new fashion more than anything. So I'm super excited to see what the presentation of football looks like. Kenny, same question. A uh, kid on Christmas or uh, a virgin on, um, on prom night? Well, Mr. Collange, I would say I'm more like a guy on Valentine's Day who has three dates already. <laughs> I'm just happy. Let's just see what happens. <laughs> because it's kind of sneaking up on us. There's no preseason. I don't know. I really don't know who's good or who's bad. You don't know how the teams look, you know, and there's so much going on with other sports. Baseball is, you know, kind of crazy with the COVID this and Missing games, that basketball in the bubble. You got the U.S. Open right now. It's just a lot going on. So then now football, you throw football on top of that, we've had nothing until tomorrow. And then we get everything. So it's like, oh, let's see what happens. Let's see how this rolls, you know? All right. If you had to select a, a game of the week, a highlight to tell the fans like they must tune in to watch, what game are you picking in week one? Travis. Well, like always, Carl, you know I don't listen, so I got a couple games right here. Give me, let me run through. Uh, <laughs> listen, you're on the time schedule. You know we got other. All right, all right. Listen, Hold listen, on, let me go. Listen, let me let me rock. Before all you right, go, first, this is a combat. I get every single contributing team 
Uh, NBA you eat up my you. time right now. <laughs> <laughs> go, go. Let's go. All right, let's all right, go. all right. Go. First, we're going to start off with the Browns versus the Ravens. I like that game right there because we got that Browns revamp offensive line. You got the new head coach who's going to come in with that zone uh, Shanahan scheme right there. Uh, Nick Chubb, he, of course, he's on, he's on my fantasy team, so therefore I need him to do well. Going up against that stout Ravens defense, and then you got the return of the MVP. Didn't necessarily have the best playoff run, so he's got to redeem himself. We'll see what happens with that. Uh, you know, these last two, week one, that's what you said. He's gonna redeem him, redeem himself in week one. I mean, we got. I need to see. He got to <laughs> take the next level. He got to take the next level. We Are know. We, we know. We know how. We know how he looks. I think he has, I need, he has three months to kind of redeem himself until he gets. I know, but the la, but the last taste, the last scene, we ha, it left a bad taste in my mouth. I need to see, you know what I mean? I need him to. He has two bad okay. in a row, right? So I'm Travis, that's right. game one. I asked for one game right, and you're giving me two. All right, all right, so, all right, hold on. The next two games I got for you, I think these two games right here will decide wild card spots because the teams only play once. I like the Seattle versus Falcons game. And the Cowboys versus the Rams game. I think whoever wins those games will end up with some wild card spots. I think because neither I don't see any of those teams winning their divisions. Okay, Travis, what is? Um, not, I'm sorry, Rick. If you had to pick a, the game of the week for for Week One to tell the fans that they have to tune in, what would you say? I mean, for me, it's right off the bat. You know, opening game tomorrow. You got the defending champs, uh, Chiefs against the Texans. Um, I mentioned before being excited to see what the presentation of the game looks like um, from the NFL's perspective, how they're going to kind of deliver us that experience without having the fans in the crowd and whatnot. So we have, they haven't had any test runs with preseason or hall of fame games or nothing like that. So this is it. It's lights, cameras, action for the first time in a pandemic era tomorrow for everybody to see. So that part of it is super interesting to me, but if we are talking about the teams on the field, Obviously, we've got the defending champs coming in, you know, Patty Mahomes coming in, strutting his stuff, talking that ish. That boy is, you know, ready to really grab grab the league and and hold it for a while, you know. So um, definitely super excited to see what uh, um, Edward Hillel looks like in that backfield. Is he going to be the actual, you know, every down number one guy back there, despite having your traditional preseason and whatnot? Um, Nicole Hardman is another dude on the offensive side that, you know, looking to see how he evolves within that dynamic offense. Um, on the other side of the ball, Watson just got paid. We all know they sent Hopkins away um, o- over the offseason. So you're looking at a Johnson & Johnson backfield. We're going to see a lot more of Duke Johnson, in my opinion. I think he has to be implemented into the offense a little bit better. And then, you know, giving up Hopkins, you've got a bunch of receivers that are really good two and three guys. I don't know if they necessarily have a true one. When you're looking at, you know, Fuller, Stills, uh, uh, Cobb, I forget who the other dude is. They got, you know, Brandon Cooks, you know what I mean? So you've got a solid batch of guys that are like two threes. So to see if any one of them really steps up and be a true number one is going to be really interesting. So I think right out the gate, tomorrow's game is going to tell us a lot about this, uh, this season in a nutshell. Football God, you have to pick a game to tell the fans to watch out there. What game should they circle on their calendar in time? On a micro level, I agree with everything Rick said about uh, just you got the defending world champs, you got Pat Mahomes, you got exciting Chiefs offense, and just everything about that. Those are just the games you want to watch regardless. And then you have uh, Houston Texans where you got to see if Bill O'Reilly is a clown or he's a genius in trading hop. So that will I vote clown. play out. So <laughs> I'm, I, I'm voting yeah, clown. I, I, <laughs> I, I agree with you on that aspect as well, Rick. Um yeah, and then on a on a macro level, anything Bucks. I want to see how that offense looks. I want to see how Tom Brady looks without Belichick. I want to see how that offense looks with a competent quarterback. I want to see what Bill Arians has in store for the the offensive weapons that they have. I want to see if Gronk still has anything left, and I want to see if that defense is um as they don't need to be world beaters, but they just got to be you know good enough to make some stops when stops need to be. So I think the Bucks games are real interesting and just to see what happens with that division. Because now you have uh, the Falcons are going to be trying to make a comeback because they embarrassed themselves last year, last couple of years. And then you got the Saints, who's always up there, Drew Brees is up with them. So, you know, that's a real that's a real competitive division that I would like to uh, – that I want to okay. see. 
All right. Uh, my last question comes from Travis. Mr. Box Office put his producer hat on, and he contacted me for the question of the day. I'm going to toss it to Rick first. Uh, your most outlandish and ridiculous predict, bold prediction for the season that you kind of sort of believe. Rick, on spot. <laughs> on spot? Yeah. Bold prediction, ridiculous. May sound ridiculous to the fans, but you kind of believe it in your heart. I mean, depending on what my guy does when he gets out on the field, don't be surprised if the Dolphins sneak into the playoffs. Dolphins making the playoffs. Okay. Kenny, a bold prediction for the season right now. That, that sounds ridiculous, but in your heart, you kind of believe it. Patriots win the division again. Oof. Oof. Okay. Travis? Well, past few years, you know, we've had a second year QB win the MVP. You know, um, uh, Carson Wentz would have won it, but he got hurt. Then you had um, Pat Mahomes and then Lamar Jackson. Everybody seems to be on the Kyler Murray bandwagon this year, but I'm going to go with another second-year QB. I'm going to go for Drew Locke in Denver winning the MVP this year. You believe that? He's got the weapons. He's got he's got the weapons out there. He's got the weapons. Don't believe that. Look, I I understand what he's saying. It's about to be an outlandish. He Uh, has the weapons. I've seen crazier things. It's not about the weapons. It's about him. What does he got? He's, he showed that he, he showed that he's pretty deep. I mean, we need, see way more. We, need to see way more. we need to see way more from him, but I mean, I hopefully John L. If John L. I feel he's found his guy, then hey, I feel like the weapons are there. The opportunity will be there because in that division, you're going to get in a few shootouts. Listen, no. John John, think, Al, John Elway felt like he found his guy the three, four times. Right? Many times. That is true. Many that times. True. He traded yeah, at, some, at, some, at some point, at some point, you got to look out and find somebody. I mean, yeah, he did that already. He got Peyton Manning. That was it. He's looking uh, right. <laughs> Bonus question here before I let you guys go: How many fantasy teams are you guys on? And 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 I'm looking forward to the fantasy uh, for this year. Kenny. Oh, I'm not. I tried to get out of him, but I had to. My friend called me back. He's like, yo, I need you. So I was like, all right. I don't want to be on any fantasy teams because it's just fantasy is stressful on a regular year. And let alone now you're throwing in a COVID year. I just didn't want to deal with it. So it's like I'm in it, but I'm not mentally invested because I would drive myself crazy. Okay. I'm I'm not that life right now. Rick, are you in? Are you in? Are you with Kenny on that? I'm I'm a glutton for punishment, man. I'm I'm six deep. I got my last draft tonight, oh, right at the buzzer. <laughs> I'm ready, man. I'm I'm like, come on, man, let's let's go. <laughs> Travis, are you in on any fantasy teams? Or are, I, mean, are, are I got you... one. I got one season long one, but I'm here for the daily fantasies this year. I want to take it week by week, man. I can't don't lock me into all this stuff with all this uncertainty. So I'll yeah. take it. I'll take the daily fantasy. Travis, have you ever won? Have you ever won a fantasy league? Have you ever won? Oh, yeah, I've won a couple, sir. I and they must be the worst leagues in the history never. of the league. I'm glad you, never. I'm glad I'm you said that. Excellent, GM. You sir. cannot. Excellent. With your football knowledge, you cannot win any league. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. What's so, the joke? I need proof. So, all right. All right. So I'm Rick has some. I got the proof. Listen, the league you're in, they got to be picking kickers first. <laughs> so Rick has some hardware there. Rick, Rick, can you talk about, are you a, a, a defending champion or is current, that from like 10 yes. years ago? Nah, nah. Current <laughs> reigning defending right here, man. I'm, I'm holding man, on to this one title. I'm, I'm hoping I could keep it for another year. Trying to go back and back. Okay. He's, in He's in a family league. That's what that is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, let's, let's, get, let's get a sports headless <laughs> daily fantasy going. I know we got a couple Listen, leagues. I know a couple let's people have a couple going. Yeah, but yeah, one I thing I wanted to develop. Yeah, one thing I want to develop, and I think I've been talking to you guys about it, is like a predictions, like a point system. So every week, guys are going to give me their predictions for the week. And we're going to keep tallying whoever has the most. You get one point for having predicted a game to be right. And then at the end, we'll see who has the most. I mean, you can do that with daily pick You can yeah. do daily pick and then whoever has the best percentage at the end of the season wins. Yeah, that, that could work. <laughs> I, I, I can definitely talk to you guys about that. Real quick, we got one more minute. But um, what are your guys' thoughts on the NBA playoffs, how that's unfolding? Any any thoughts on the series and how the Bucks got eliminated, Lakers, Rockets, Celtics? Can't talk. He's going to take up the whole thing. <laughs> okay, okay, the okay. Bucks, Rick, the Rick, 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 looking ugly, man. That's nasty. The way they got out, knocked out of there, that gentleman sweep. That Rick, Lakers, real quick, it's that Lakers Rockets one. I like it. 
Go ahead, I think uh, it comes down to when you're dealing with the bubble, it, they say all the, the better team will always win. I think what we saw in that Bucks Heat matchup, for that matchup, Miami was the better team. All right, guys, thank you for joining me. Please make sure you tune in for the rest of the segments. We, we have is Jeter, Derek Jeter overrated coming up next. We also have is Pippin the Star or Superstar also on the way. Make sure you like, share, comment, subscribe. So we got some goodies. Thank you for joining me. And you that guys, get spicy. good luck during the season. Yeah, it is. It is. You're watching the sports hit list by the fans for the fans. I'm bringing Later. my baseball contributors right now. Um, I'm bringing to seeing Garrison and TK the Tank, Tom Kenny. They're going to discuss with me about uh, Derek Jeter. Tom Kenny's coming in. Um, please make sure you also download the Worldwide Sports Radio Network app. That's where you get all of our shows, all of our content. And uh, you can get um, other shows just like the sports hit list by the fans for the fans. For the- TK the Tank, Tom Kenny's in the building. Hey. TK, how you doing, man? Good. How are you guys doing? We're good. Garrison, the younger brother of Greg, how you doing, sir? First yeah. time on the live. We're live right now. There's no <laughs> taping. There's no cutting. It's live. <laughs> um, before we get into what we're here to discuss, Travis had a hit list question of the day. Your bold prediction, most ridiculous prediction for the NFL season, but you actually believe it. TK. Uh, that, well, that the Giants and the Jets will both be in the race to make the playoffs. That's my ridiculous prediction, but my actual prediction is that uh, the uh, Buccaneers and the Chiefs will face off in the Super Bowl. Tom Brady versus Bill Belichick, Young versus New, passing of the torch. Okay. Garrison, Mm. bold prediction, ridiculous that you actually believe for the upcoming NFL season that kicks off tomorrow. Oh, bold prediction. Tampa Bay, the Buccaneers doesn't make the playoffs. Uh, I don't think I don't I don't I I don't see Brady doing anything super crazy this season except being exposed for being old. You okay. know, and it's okay, and that's okay. But all right, so uh, this debate about Derek Jeter came about <laughs> in our last Mount Rushmore series. For the for the fans who are watching right now, we have a series for Mount Rushmore. We're currently on episode six, and we did the shortstop series. And Ray Jarvis, special shout out to him. He shout said, to Ray. "Yeah, he said that Derek Jeter was overrated defensively, and that sparked the conversation. And a lot of Yankee fans are upset about it. And it just got my mind turning. And I said to myself, could Derek Jeter possibly be overrated? And I am a Yankee fan. I'm, I'm just asking an objective question. And for some reason, Garrison said, "Yeah, sure, he is." Tom Kenny said, "No, he's not." So here we have a segment. So Garrison, I'm going to open the floor to you first. How can you even make the argument that number two, Derek Jeter, right, um, the hits leader for the Yankees, is overrated? How that, that sounds completely outlandish to even say. You know, you know. Let me start with this. Let me say this: Derek Jeter is great. Derek Jeter is a great player, hands down. But with that being said, that doesn't mean he isn't overrated. Both those things can be true. And I have a favor to everyone watching this, Tom, to you. I need you to leave that Yankee sensationalist, that diehard pinstripe bravado, that captain or captain type of, like, leave that at the door. Because the, the, we're going we're to talk about facts throughout this whole thing. And if we're going to start with this and call, I, I could go ahead and just go into my point. Go ahead, please. By, by all so, means. Wait, I let's, gave you the first. So and, like, and, 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 and TK has his sunglasses on because he doesn't want to see it. You know? <laughs> and he's kind of <laughs> looking like he doesn't want he's, he, he's in shock. Go ahead, Garrison. So let's start this. For one, Derek Jeter's career, 95 to 2004. Most importantly, from 2004 to 2010, Derek Jeter won five gold gloves, which is that was he was from 30 to 36. Now, the thing about Jeter is that, like, when you to, when you think about him, you think about the flip, you have the jump throw, you have all these things that make Derek Jeter seem bigger than what he is defensively. And realistically, what Jeter was was a defensive liability. Now, throughout those years, of from, 20, from 2004 to 2010, Jeter's defensive rating was a 7.7, which out of like 20, the 24 players of that same time, time period, from 2004 to 2010, he was ranked 18th out of that 24 list. So just to name a couple of people who are on that list, you have Jimmy Rollins, you have Orlando Cabrera, you have J.J. Hardy, Jose Reyes, Rafael Fercal, Edgar Renteria, Elvis Andrews. You have a lot of premier guys that you heard of in this league right now. Now, when you're talking about defense, some people automatically go to errors because 
that's what they assume is what the defense is going to be about is that if they make errors, but that's not the best thing to judge it. Like that's like saying if I was a basketball player and because I got into a ton of fouls, I was no longer good at defense. And that's not the case. It's just like that. That's not, that's not what you determine to be good. So with Jeter, you have to go by defensive runs shared. And ideally in the position of shortstop, your job is to one, you have to have range. You need to be able to prevent runs. That's why you're there. So from 2004 to 2010, when he won those five gold, five gold gloves, Jeter had a defensive run share of negative 92, which is dead last out of all the qualifying shortstops I just mentioned out of those 24 shortstops. That means he gave up negative 92 runs worse than the average of all those, of like of those years of those shortstops. So let me just explain what defensive run shares is. So essentially it's how many runs can you save that are better or worse than the average at that position? So in that position saying that Jeter was negative 92, whatever the average was of that league of the league of the standard, he was 92. He was giving up 92 runs at his position, which was the worst, like out of every qualifying shortstop, it was the worst. And just to start when you, when you, when you deal with in terms of, you know, worst and best, especially when you're giving awards out, if you're going to reward someone for doing these things, their numbers have to match up. You can't take into how you feel about them as a person, their likability, the marketability, which a lot lot of things happen for that regime. You can't do that. So case in point, negative 92 worst runs. Now, if you you keep going, it's a couple of people who were ahead of him. You had Yaneski Betancourt, who gave up negative 62. You had Dan Ugla, who gave up negative 66. And Hanley Ramirez, who gave negative 63 in that same time period. Yaneski Betancourt, Dan Ugla, Hanley Ramirez. Are those shortstops that you would say are good defensively? Never. You wouldn't utter it. You wouldn't utter those shortstops as being defensive shortstops. Yet Jeter was worse than them. But why do we revere him as that? Why do we give him that same sort of you know, Allure is being this defensive whiz, and that's not the case. Now, man, I'm so I'm going to give you a couple more minutes because I know. Couple more, okay, cool, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to make it quick, buddy. All right, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. So, I think the biggest thing that we start to see happening with Derek Jeter is that people conflate a couple of issues. They like they look at him as the captain. They look at him as this giant figure in New York baseball sports because he was the captain of one of the greatest franchises, but all that goes into it has bolstered his legacy and his lore far past the, where his actual skill level was. And that's not to say that Derek Jeter was terrible. He's not a bum. He's not trash. I'm not saying that at all, but where he is currently rated and how he is socially perceived is far exceeds what he was actually doing. Take into account. I have, I have one comparison I would like to throw out there. It's a tale of two players, essentially. You have someone who had 71.3 war, 11,195 ABs, over 345,000 hits, 260 home runs, a 310 batting average, 1,923 runs scored, uh, 1,311 RBIs, 358 stolen bases in 20 years in the league. As you can know, that's Derek Jeter. Beautiful numbers. Then you have someone who is a 93.6 war, 11,068 ABs, 3,166 hits, 477 home runs, two, a 286 batting average, 1,524 runs scored, 17,000 RBI, I'm 1,700 RBIs, 121 stolen bases, and 21 years in the league. Now, if you look at those numbers, you see they're both great you see that they're they're both Hall of Fame numbers. One of them belonged to Derek Jeter. The other one belongs to Adrian Beltre. The the numbers aren't that much, aren't that different. And I I could argue that one is better than the other. Beltre's are better. But why are they spoken about differently? Why is Derek Jeter spoken about as such a surefire Hall of Famer? And he had 14 All-Star appearances. Beltre has four. But Beltre, in the same time from 2007 to 2016, he led third basements in defensive run shares. 
period. Hunt by, and it was by one, he had 115 runs saved. So defensively, he was a stud, but he only had four. They had the same amount of gold gloves. He had five gold gloves, same as Jeter, but he's always consistently better than him. He, <laughs> more home runs, more RBIs, and Grant, you could say it's a different, but the war, 93.6 war. So it's like the issue is really how we see Jeter, how we look at him as this huge figure. And it's not the case. And honestly, this is what I wanted to say before, but there is a very similar thing between Derek Jeter, Babe Ruth, and for the sake of it, we'll even throw Eli Manning in there. They're all overrated. They're all held in this mythical concept of, of being better than what they actually are because of what they represent to the city and to the team as opposed to their stats. Now I'm I'm I've been talking for a bit, so I'm gonna let you go. Tom. Yeah, you have. I mean, I I don't know how much t- TK. What are your thoughts? I, I and I know you're a big Eli Manning guy, so th- I think that's a double for you. But yeah, I, I guess we're hurt. gonna try to stick to uh, <laughs> one to hurt. Peter here. What are your thoughts on what he said and what's your rebuttal in, in proving that he's not? Well, uh, Derek Jeter. You look at his whole career. You look at him. He came in '95, played to 2014. In 1996, he won Rookie of the Year. And in 1996, the Yankees broke their drought uh, and won a World Series. Now, from 1996 to 2012, the Yankees made the playoffs every single year. And the man who was there for all that was Derek Jeter. Uh, Derek Jeter, you know, he was the captain. And I know that it is a team sport. But you look at the Yankees, there's been a lot of guys to come and go throughout those years. And the one constant, well, the two constants were probably Derek Jeter and for a while, Jorge Posada. Um, Derek Jeter and Jorge Posada, the only men in the modern baseball era to win five World Series with one team. Derek Jeter, like you said, all the stats. And yes, was he the best defensive shortstop? No, but he was really good. His defensive fielding percentage was somewhere around, I think, 975, 976. You look at Ozzie Guillen, his was 978. You look at Barry Larkin, his was, I think Derek Jeter was 976 and Barry Larkin is 975. I don't have it in front of me, but he was very comparable in that way to those guys. Maybe in not in the defense of preventing runs scored. But still, you said he was not good at that. The Yankees still went to the playoffs every single season. Derek Jeter was a winner. And if there's one thing that you can look at, and New York sports fan, whatever, you look at who are winners. And Derek Jeter was a winner, and that does help elevate him. Because when he went down, 2012, his last season, where he was capable, I would say, where he was Derek Jeter, uh, he was 38. Uh, He led the league in hits with 212. Uh, He took the Yankees to first place. The next season, he was out with injury. The Yankees didn't make the playoffs for the first time since Derek Jeter won his Rookie of the Year award. Derek Jeter came back in 2014 for his farewell tour, and the Yankees also missed the season, uh, the playoffs that season as well. And then they didn't. They made a one-game wild card in 2015 and missed it in 2016. So without Derek Jeter and without Derek Jeter playing at his top potential, it doesn't matter who else was on the field. The Yankees were not as effective, and that shows Derek Jeter's effectiveness. Now, the stats may say his wins above replacement is one thing, but when you look at the field and you look at the standings and you look at everything you're seeing with your eyes, you see how much of a difference Derek Jeter made. That's why when the Yankees went out in 2003-2004 uh, <clears throat> and went and got the best shortstop in the world, the best hitting shortstop there ever was, he said, I want to play with Derek Jeter. I will move to third base. So you play for the Yankees. The Yankees always get the best players. That's the thing about the Yankees. They always want the best players. They'll move on from you if you can't perform. The Yankees never had to move on from Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter always solidified that shortstop position. The old Yankee Stadium was the house that Ruth built. The new Yankee Stadium is the house that Jeter built. Now, you you did bring all those defensive stats. No, oh, it is the house that Jeter built, no doubt about it. Uh, a three-peat in baseball is absolutely ridiculous. Making it to seven World Series, winning five, absolutely ridiculous for baseball we don't see that in baseball Derek Jeter was the man that helmed all of that Derek Jeter does you said he was comparable to Adrian Beltre over a 20-year career a 25 points in a batting average is a lot now Adrian Beltre had a little more pop at 200 more home runs that's great Derek Jeter is still fifth among shortstops all time in doubles he only had four less doubles than Alex Rodriguez Alex Rodriguez hit 548 Derek Jeter hit 544 Derek Jeter is a exceptional shortstop And just from growing up in New York, and I'll even give this to you, Garrison. If you're a New Yorker, you're looking at Derek Jeter, Babe Ruth, or Eli Manning, of course you're going to overrate them. Of course I overrate Eli Manning. Objectively, Eli Manning, probably not a Hall of Famer. But for me, Eli Manning, 
best flipping quarterback that ever lived. You won me two Super Bowl titles, so I love him. <laughs> All right? But I'm a Met fan. I'm not even a Yankee fan, but I could see from growing up, it, being born in 1990, starting to play baseball in 1996, seeing every little kid on the baseball field emulate Derek Jeter. There was something about that man that transcended the sport. So you can have an Adrian Beltre. You can have a guy who's great in the field and who does great things, kind of like Shawn Michaels, but he's not the rock. He doesn't pop off the screen oh, and become man. Hey, that was a personal icon. shot. This was a personal. And that PK, is you can't Jeter. mix debates. You're taking a personal shot. You can't mix debates here. Uh, Carl, I, I wasn't taking a personal shot at anyone. I was just saying, you know, <laughs> Derek Jeter's no Shawn Michaels. Derek Jeter is top of the top. Derek Jeter is the man in New York. And you can say that New York is overrated. And that's fine. But he was one short of being unanimous for the Hall of Fame. And that is a nationwide voting. They all gave him the first place votes for the Hall of Fame. And he was so close to being unanimous. Because the thing is, you could be Barry Bonds and have the home run record. You could be Ken Griffey Jr. and have the sweetest swing, but you still have never won a World Series ring. And Derek Jeter won a World Series ring. He won four under one regime, and then he won another one under a different manager with a whole different team, with the exception of Jorge Posada. Derek Jeter has lasted the test of time. Derek Jeter will always be remembered. And if you want to say Derek Jeter is overrated because his uh, – kind of abstract fielding stat wasn't as good as you like that's your opinion man but everyone else is looking at Derek Jeter going hey this is the best shortstop I've ever seen and he's also has the second most games played at shortstop which shows his longevity in the hardest place to play baseball the New York Yankees a place where your job is always under scrutiny from the press from George Steinbrenner the owner his son's the owner he always felt pressure and he always handled it perfectly you cannot ask for a better man for that position at that time and that is why the Yankees had a dynasty because of Jack Cheater okay we got three hey. minutes left guys if you want to throw in I got some yeah no, I, I got a, go ahead go I ahead, got a guys. couple stuff a couple stuff for one the Yankees didn't just miss the playoffs in 2012 they also missed in 2008 Jeter was a part of that he wasn't there for that um now yeah, the year, yeah that was the year that last time at the stadium before they went over to the new now yeah, they did miss the playoffs that year very, very important. <laughs> Alex Rodriguez didn't move to third because he wanted to. Alex Rodriguez moved to third because Derek Jeter couldn't go anywhere else. Derek Jeter couldn't what play third. Derek Jeter could not play third base. Derek didn't have the arm strength. He couldn't do it. Alex Rodriguez at that point was a better shortstop. Than okay, so Derek let me Jeter. ask this. T- but he could have went with to that any statement? other team and been the shortstop. Yeah. He could have went to any other team and been the best shortstop ever. The best okay. hitting shortstop ever. But, but he said, Alex Rodriguez Rodriguez is third to win. I will move okay. to third base and forego being the best hitting shortstop TK, of all time so I can TK, win a ring. TK, could you have moved Jeter to another position? Is that That's a fair question. No. Could you move him to second base? Sure. No. Yeah. Why? You have to know. <laughs> yeah, okay. Do you, you have, have Robbie. Robbie, Robbie had a. Alex Rodriguez, the man that had to move. Derek Jeter did not move. Derek Jeter could not move because he wouldn't have been able to play anywhere else. That that's that what it was. Al- Alex Rodriguez wanted to win. That's why he went to the Yankees. That's why Alex he wanted to go play with Derek Jeter. He wants to go play with he a wanted, He wanted to win a ring because yeah. in Seattle he was not twice. They lost to the Yankees in the ALCS. Yep. He, yep. he 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 lost to them. He goes to Texas. They lose. He yep. wanted to win. He was going to sign with Boston, but the Yankees at that current juncture, one, they would give him the most money that he was going to ask for, and they were also going to give him the best chance to win. That's so, like, and, and <laughs> to make it work, to did make Alex, it work, he played third. To make it work, he played third because he could, because he was talented he enough to, win to a play ring. that position. Now, he said, Derek how, Jeter's how, the man, however, and I'll follow him, and he'll win me however, a ring. Because Derek like, Jeter's the best to ever play this, shortstop this is, this, 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 is, this, is the, this is the problem, Tom. You're, spo- you're speaking from a place – where it, it's personal. You, you said, oh, he's the not personal. I'm not a Yankees no, fan. No, but no, but in, in terms of how you look at him, how you look at Jeter, separate the persona Jeter from the player. Because with Jeter's right. aura and presence far exceeded what he All was right. doing on the, the field. And, look, the guy and even then, if you, if you want if you want to say Jeter's clutch, if you want to say Jeter, Mr. November, postseason poppy, I get it. But Jeter also has the most games played in the postseason. Why? Because he was on a juggernaut team. <laughs> like, like the, the Yankees team success is far bolstered what Jeter was able to do. And I get it. You still have to be Which great started in those situations. You, you still have to be great in those situations. However, you take Jeter out of the Yankees market, who is Jeter? 
Is he the same person? You're, you're, is he the captain? Is he the same person that we're looking at and we're speaking okay. to? So, so, okay, so, 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 Garrison, let me yes. ask you this Absolutely. question. You don't know he ever played with a different team. All you go look at what he did with the Yankees. The Yankees were trying to win the New World Series in his first full season, and they won the World Series, and they never looked back. Garrison, let me ask you this question, though. Does your, his sixth all-time in hits, does that, that count for anything, though? Does that yeah. count? And see, this is why I pointed out that saying Jeter is great. You can't take away longevity and consistency, but you also cannot take it out of context and just apply the lore and legacy to something that isn't always there. Like, who could he? I think he had like four or five seasons under 200 hits. He led the league in hits before. He didn't have any MVPs. There's reason for that. I don't know like, what's going on with your audio. I think your phone's tired of hearing this. But Derek Jeter, yeah, he had the audio's consistent, a little muffled, consistent Garrison. hits. He had multiple seasons of 200 hits. You look, we put Ichiro as one of the top guys, uh, the other Polius. We, uh, your brother, I'm pretty sure. I don't know if you guys are cousins or brothers. I'm not sure. But <laughs> brothers, 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 brothers. It's three of them, yeah. Yeah, say. they're Greg's brothers. They're Greg's brothers. Okay. They're Greg's, Greg's younger brothers. brothers, yeah. Thank you, Carl. So your no brother problem. put Ichiro up there because Ichiro was good at hitting, and he was a great hitter. He's one of the best hitters of all time. So and was I, Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter was in 60 home runs, 550 yeah. doubles, and the rest were all singles, but he still went out there and hit. I can concede because I can call Jeter overrated so not saying he's a bad player. Jeter is so... No, I, I understand. The uh, overrated uh, argument is a difficult uh, argument to make uh, because uh, you can say uh, anyone's overrated. Don't conflate what Jeter and Ichiro has done. Ichiro has had 200 response hits for I think the first 10 or 12 seasons in, 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 in the when he started after having you know, 8 plus years in Japan. Not the same. Ichiro's okay. a better Guys, we got to wrap up, but, 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 but yeah, your audio is coming in muffled. How many rings muffled. does each of have? How many rings? It's a team yeah, story. Right. Right. Okay, guys, 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 final thoughts here, TK and Garrison, your audio. I don't know your audio is a little muffled a little bit. You may, may want to check Look, that. But TK, right, final thoughts first. here. Final thoughts. The fact of the matter is he has 3,400-something hits. He has 260 home runs. He has... Multiple RBIs. I don't have the stats in front of me. You lay the stats out. That's fine. But Derek Jeter, 3,000 hit club in and of itself makes you all a famer. Look at Craig Biggio. Craig Biggio, another guy that 3,000 hits. But Derek Jeter hit for 30 points higher average, hitting 310 for a career, playing in New York City, playing in the toughest place to play, winning consistently, winning pretty much the whole time you're there, minus 2008. I'm not a Yankees fan. I thought they made it the whole time. I'll give you that. Maybe they didn't make it 2008. But even regardless, uh, with all that winning, you look, who was the focal point? Who was the center of the team through all that winning? It was Derek Jeter. Even with re- changes of regime, even with a different owner, even with a different manager, even with a whole different team behind him, they still won, and they still cons- consistently made the playoffs. Now, was he the best defensive shortstop? I don't think anyone's saying that. But if you were drafting a team today, what shortstop would you take over Derek Jeter? Because I can only imagine taking Derek Jeter. Alex Rodriguez. <laughs> okay. Alex Rodriguez is in the shortstop. He's a third baseman. No, he's a shortstop. <laughs> Garrison, Garrison, guys, thank you for joining me. Garrison, I'll no, see you a little bit later. Hold on, hold on, Carl. Let me just get one, one more point. point. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Point. Let me get my last point in. Go ahead. I said it a lot of times, Tom. I'm not like Derek Jeter is. He is great. You can be a Hall of Famer, and still how the so how society perceives you in this sport. And not equate, and it doesn't because okay. in terms of in terms oh, 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 oh. in terms of <laughs> in terms of Derek Jeter's ability and like how he actually played, he is overrated. You cannot tell me someone who Dan Ugla had a better defensive run share than and Dan, Dan Ugla, Ugla sucks. It, and case in point. He got five gold gloves from that. Five gold gloves from being the worst. If that's not the media liking Derek Jeter and giving him, they handed him five gold gloves. That means five years people were robbed from being, should have had that that award. Aren't gold gloves voted on by players? Don't players vote for the gold gloves, not the media? We'll have to look that up. Okay, we got to look that up. Well, know, well, what I'm saying is you uh, could say someone's overrated, and that's fine. But the media, the people, everyone throughout, whoever watches baseball all looks and sees Derek Jeter is great. 
yeah, despite the that, fact yeah, that Dan Hoffman had a better defensive season. That, that's called lore. Okay, guys, guys, I, I'm, I'm going to have to talk to you later. That we can do a, a part two. Season, people look with their eyes and they know <laughs> what they're doing. Man, we got to go. Call, call, yeah, call listen, time listen, on listen, us, man. Listen, listen. Uh, <laughs> Garrison, hey, Garrison I'll see discussion. you later for the catches Mount Rushmore, okay? All right, you guys take care. TK, you want to stick around for this uh, for this quick segment right now? Let yeah, I'll have... stick around. All right, you're watching the Sports Hit List by the fans, for the fans, uh, live on the Worldwide Sports Radio Network. Uh, Carl Coulange here. We're just going to switch it over to a quick quick segment on pro wrestling, and then we're going to uh, have our main event, which is Scotty Pippen Star versus Superstar at 5 o'clock. Make sure you tuned in for that. That's going to get a little bit heated because there's a lot to say about Scotty Pippen. Please make sure you check out the Worldwide Sports Radio Network and watch all of their shows. Make sure you download the app. Make sure you do that. Let me bring in uh, Nick Madonaro. Nick, how you doing, loser? How's it going? Oh, winner. I'm sorry. You're the winner, right? Well, yeah, you're the winner. I'm you sorry. Loser? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You won the Predictions Championship. That's your champion. Got yes, it. you're right. You're right. We have Zach the Outlaw, who is the loser. Zach, how yes. you doing, man? I am the loser. I'm doing very well. But I got some substance. I want to show you... When I was in the Thunderdome, I can do that from my computer. I have okay. uh, software to show those photos. Okay, okay. Give me one second. And TK is sticking around. So we we really wanted to briefly touch upon the experience of being in the Thunderdome. Zach, how's that going? Uh, tapping into the Thunderdome. It was good. So I'm gonna like I'm gonna shrink my camera real quick. Want to blow some of your minds? Um. So uh, I was in the Thunderdome. I uh, I got featured on the TV uh, as Nick did and uh, during SummerSlam. It actually is a pretty. It, it, it's a fun experience. Okay, so for those okay, so for those people who don't know, the Thunderdome basically WWE fans uh, can basically tap in live during their shows, and they can basically see themselves on screen. This is a new format that's allowing fans to be uh, in tune with the product, so they can basically see themselves and basically watch as the show is going on. Zach was on for what pay per view for uh, uh, pay, payback. payback? Payback. Oh, he was there on for Payback. Nick, have you tuned in on one of those yet or no? Yeah, uh, I, I was there for SummerSlam and for the uh, tag match. I actually saw myself in the second row. Uh, it's, it's definitely cool. It gives you a little bit more reason to be more engaged in the show because you're kind of always on the lookout for, oh, where am I? Am I there? Looking over everyone's shoulder. So it's definitely a lot more interactive. I think it's uh, really a lot more fun to watch the shows while you're in it. Right, right now you look like you're in a black hole, Nick. <laughs> TK, have you seen anything? In the, I, I've seen the backlash of – um, the inappropriate stuff that's been screened on there. I, that someone had a Chris Benoit, someone had a KKK, someone like, clearly, but can they screen this or can anyone just go in there and do whatever they want? TK. Um, I mean, I'm hoping they're screening it. Uh, there's only so many, they let a thousand people in at a time. You'd think they would have people watching it at all times. If something pops up, bam, kick that person off. But obviously it's not been working as things have gotten on. Uh, recently though, I haven't heard as much. So maybe they're tightening up security on it, but all I can do is speculate. Um, to kind of clarify, so with the Thunderdome feed, that is like the live feed. That is as it's happening. Okay. Versus versus kind of what, what you see on Raw or on the network, because that's like a minute delay. So like it, it's very hard for like for them to kind of like keep track of like a thousand different cameras all across okay. the, 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 the the dome itself. All right. Um, in our sports hit list pro wrestling chat, there's been a lot of uh, banter back and forth about AEW and WWE and how both shows are doing. Um, so far, how, 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 how are you guys seeing? Um, we thought we'd be out of this already. And we've had all these conversations go- going back to March when we did our WrestleMania show. We said, you know what, by SummerSlam, fans will be back and we'll be ready to have wrestling like it is again. But it doesn't look like fans are coming back anytime soon. So how are both shows doing? I know AEW just came off their pay-per-view. I know WWE just came off, and now they're building to Class of Champions. Nick, what's your thought on both products? Uh, I, I think that both this time of the, you know, I guess the COVID era really kind of brought out the best in all these companies because it made them go out, think outside of the box. It made them do something that they haven't done in a while, which is, like I said, think outside of the box. They've had their regular setups in the arenas, but now they, ha- they, they couldn't do that. So we see AEW having their open-air venue in Jacksonville where they can now have fans. Um, I just think it's really cool to get fans back there. And WWE's innovation of the Thunderdome and the Amway Center in Orlando. Uh, I think both, you know, both presentations are great because the whole key of it is to make you kind of forget that there's no fans. Because, you know, I, I obviously it was all oh, wrestling better with fans. And we all agree. But I think what they've both done to make you, you know, present it as we're going to make you forget about there's no fans, I think has been top notch. Zach, what are your thoughts? Do you agree with what Nick said? Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Like I, I'm happy to have the fans back on um on AEW because like 
there's like like the things that the that fans do at w, at an AEW show, like they sing along to Chris Jericho's theme, uh, uh, and it's and, and it's and it's very good because like it, whenever you see that, you're like, now I'm kind of hyped now to see a Chris Jericho match, or I'm hyped now to see um, just overall Chris Jericho speak. So so, but but there are some fans back at the, some of the AEW shows. They're just sitting social Correct. distancing, right? It's yeah. at a uh, fifteen percent capacity. I, I, okay. I believe it's five hundred people a show. Yeah. Okay. Uh, TK, what are your thoughts on uh, what we always say, the new social distance era of pro wrestling? Yeah, I mean, it's it's weird. Um, I mean, I can't wait to get back to having actual fans in the seats. I mean, Thunderdome, <clears throat> excuse me, is uh, cool. But, I mean, half the time I'm like, I'm getting distracted at all these, like, faces. It reminds me of uh, Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury, where they said they would have, uh, like, a TV screen in everyone's parlor. And, and it just it feels very George Orwellian to me. Uh, kind of freaks me out a little bit. But it's, it's, it's good that they, when they pipe in the sound now, it doesn't seem so ridiculous. When there was an empty arena and they would pipe in sound, I would be like, what is this? As for AEW, I think having some fans in the seats is great. Uh, I watched the pay-per-view this last Saturday. The fans were singing Chris Jericho's... Uh, theme song there but it was like 100 degrees and they got kind of got worn out by a long pay-per-view so uh but still we're making strides towards it and it's nice to see the fans in the stands enjoying the show okay a uh, final question here nick are you a football fan i know you're an eagles fan right i am an eagles fan. all right a hit list question of the you day a bold, uh, bold prediction for the new season that you think is ridiculous but you believe it ridiculous but i believe it um, that the Eagles are going to come out of the NFC East over the Cowboys. Okay, Zach, are you a, a football fan? Uh, nope. Okay, could you just make a bold prediction anyway, just for the sake of making a bold um, prediction? I, uh, come I, on, I don't know. Jaguars. Yeah, sure, Jaguars. Well, why not? <laughs> the Jaguars are going to win the Super Bowl? Is that what you're saying? Uh, no, why not? Okay, the Jaguars are going to win the Super Bowl. Guys, thank you for Tony joining Connor, me. He's, he's a Jaguar, right? Uh, Nick, a Nick, Nick I will see you at Clash of Champions. You're not ready for the chosen one. Hey, yo. Yeah, okay, yeah. you're not ready for me. Yeah, and guys, I'll talk to you soon. No, I'm the chosen one. I've been chosen by God to lead all the prosperity. We know this. That's the script. That's the narrative. You're watching the sports hit list by the fans. You're chosen by God. I'm chosen by God. <laughs> see the you later, TK. So we have our final segment right now. It's star or superstar for Scotty Pippen. Let me bring in the rest of my hit list contributors who are coming in right now as we switch out. Uh, let's see who we have here. We have Mike Miller is back. He's not driving. We have uh, Jeff Alexis. We have Ray Jarvis. And we have Ray, the self-proclaimed commissioner. Before we begin, let me ask you guys the hit list question of the day. Ray, your outlandish tape for the NFL season that you think is ridiculous, but you believe it. Which Ray are you talking about? Yeah. Oh, I'm, to- I'm, to- I'm sorry. Ray, uh, Commissioner Ray, I'm sorry. Commissioner Ray. The outlandish take. That you think is ridiculous, but you believe it. For, uh, for a, a bold prediction for the season. That Dak Prescott's going to win the MVP. Oh. Ray Job? Uh, not really outlandish, but it's hopeful that the Giants go 2-14 and 14 and Gettleman gets fired. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Jeff? Uh, I didn't really think about it, but the, uh, the Browns win the Super Bowl. The Browns win the Super Bowl. Okay. So I know how Mike feels about the NFL. We already right. talked to him about it, but this Scottie Pippen debate is probably one of the, the most, um, talked about in the sports hit list since before the Jordan documentary, since we saw what happened with Scotty, and I believe episode two of the documentary we saw, and it's been <clears> back and forth. Jeff Alexis, before COVID, had a, a five-minute blog. He had notes in his car about how Pippen is a superstar. Pippen is great, is wonderful. And then, it was re- and then it was resurrected between Ray and Mike in our star superstar past, past players. Mike Miller said he's, not, he's a star. Ray Jarvis found that to be completely ridiculous and said he's a superstar. And I know how Ray feels that he's a star. So let's have this. Ray, I'm going to give you the floor first. Why is Scottie Pippen a superstar? Ray Jarvis, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I keep forgetting I have two Rays on set. Ray Jarvis, I'm sorry. I can't hear you, Jarv. You're not coming in on your sound. I can't, I can't hear you, Jarv. So let me go to uh, Commissioner Ray. Why isn't he a superstar? I mean, it's simple. You know, like, people got Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan confused with, like, Shaq and Kobe. Right. They're, they're not a 1A, 1B. 
it was never that, you know? It was it never was, that. It was never that at all. Really? It was, it was a one and there was a two, a clear two, no doubt. It was more Kobe Gasol than it would ever. So, that, wait, wait. So I understand. Wait, wait, wait. Time out. Oh, time out. Wait, wait, wait. So you're saying. Your soul was more valuable to Kobe than Pippen was to, to Jordan. That's what you no, basically say. No, no, that's not what he said. Stop. I'm, I'm, I'm stop. 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 That's not what he said. Stop. Okay, so what did he say? What he said. Stop. So what did you say? So what did you say? What did you say? I'm saying people are judging Scotty Michael Jordan and Scotty Pippen like Shaq and Kobe. There was two Shaq and Kobe were two superstars. It was a one A, one B. Michael and Scotty is a one and a two. Okay, so what's Gasol and Kobe? A Kobe one and a two. And a one and is two. That's it. That's what I'm trying to say. Man. Okay. okay, Ray. Ray Jarvis, can you hear me? Yeah. I'm I'm back in. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. So what are your thoughts? He he just basically said Copy. Ray just said that um Jordan and Pippen were uh, are painted as one A, one B. It's really a one and a two. What's your thoughts mm. on that? All right. Well, firstly, for the sake of clarity and for the listeners, just call me Jarv, bro. That that Jarv. that 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 simplifies everything. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank um, you. Sorry about that. Secondly, um, what's painted and what happened on the floor, we know what we saw. Like we, we, Scottie Pippen might not have been the dynamic force that was Michael Jordan, but damn it, everything else he did was a, a super key to everything. If for those who want to simplify, I heard someone talk about Shaq and Kobe here. If you want to understand what the dynamic of the, the relationship of Scottie Pippen and Jordan was, think about Shaq and Kobe, the first championship. Kobe was Pippen, the first championship, meaning he cleaned up all the messes. He ran the offense. He played defense. He did everything else that they didn't ask Jordan to do at the highest possible level possible. So to say that he's not a superstar while being able to fulfill that role, but then say Kobe was a superstar in 99-2000, it's a blatant contradiction because Pippen was the blueprint for that Kobe role in 99-2000. That is a superstar role. You don't win a championship six times without being a superstar in that role. Mike Miller, what are your thoughts on this debate? You clearly said that Pippen is a star, but Reggie Miller is a superstar, and I think that's what has a lot of people upset. The dumbest I, I had... thing ever. <laughs> ever. And, in history. And, and ever. Be, and, be, and because... I am the way that I am. I had a feeling somebody was going to say that. And I knew it was you, media man. So when we talk about star and superstar, correct? And Commissioner Ray, wow. I didn't even think about it like that. That one and two. But there's a reason why I say Reggie Miller is a superstar. And, a, and there's a key thing about superstars that we know this. One of the key things about superstars is that there's a difference when they go from regular season to playoffs. Yes. They, the game elevates. So when you say, well, man, is Scottie Pippen a superstar? Is Reggie Miller a superstar? How could you say Scottie isn't, but Reggie isn't? And That's I thought point. about that. And I said, hmm, I wonder if Scottie elevated in the playoffs. But then when we look at the numbers, let's take his one season as a solo act. 94. Look at his points. Well, in the regular season, he averaged 22. Very nice, Scotty. So that means he had to have averaged 30 in the playoffs. But in the regular season, in the playoffs, he averaged 22. Wow, interesting. But when you ask, how can Reggie Miller be a superstar? Well, let's take one uh, yeah, let's take 99, 2000. Oh, when we, we get to the, the point, problem. like, this <laughs> ain't about, this is not about Reggie Miller. No, 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 I got to cook. I got to oh, get, I'm going to take my it. headphones on while you talk then, because I'm bored. <laughs> Hold on. The kids are listening. They need to pay attention. This is education. I teach. So, 99, 2000, Reggie was averaging in the regular season 18. What did he average in the playoffs? 24. Reggie's averaged 30 in the playoffs before. 29 in the playoffs. 26 in the playoffs. That's the difference. Superstars elevate. Number twos play a role. As Ray said, Scottie Pippen is a very good Paul Gasol. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jeff? 
your reaction says it all, my brother. Your reaction just sits there. First off, both your takes are dumb. Oh. Ray and Mike. That's number one. Oh. But here's the difference. Here's the, di here's the difference. Here's the difference. Scotty Pippen's main role was to be a facilitator. He ran the offense. That's what's up. He ran the offense and yeah. he was a lockdown defender. That's his job. So how is he going to average 30 when he has to run the offense and play defense? That does not, however, take away from his superstar status. That's the point. <laughs> oh, no, wait, wait, wait. Guys, 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 guys it's this Jeff Scott. So Listen, he made, Jeff noise in the, he made <laughs> noise in the playoffs. He won six rings. The guy was an all-world defender. But unlike Reggie Miller, whose primary role was to shoot three-pointers, Scottie Pippen did everything. He guarded three positions. Reggie Miller did not. Scottie Pippen, that's what you're doing about whether or not Scottie Pippen's a star or a superstar. The well, fact of the matter is, you're, sitting there, you're talking about he averaged 24. He didn't have to do anything else. Scottie Pippen did multiple things on the floor. Yo. Reggie Miller. Not let me let me say something. Let me say something. Any of this, bro. Hold on. He said, Reggie, let me do let me oh, hold on. Oh, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Mike. 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 Hold on. I'm gonna take my headphones off. Throw my man in the mix. Okay, hold on. Wait. Okay. Okay. Let the commissioner go. Okay. Let the commissioner go. Commissioner, you have a rebuttal. Go ahead. Reggie Miller. I do. You know, um, yes, Scotty Pippen was a great defender, without a doubt. But it seems like as the years go on, his defense has somewhat elevated into some legendary status. Where's the defensive player of the years? Oh, my God. Okay, oh, to be geez. fair, though, there are a lot of great defenders <laughs> who don't get the award. <laughs> the award the way people talk about this. Okay, okay. Job, job, go ahead. Could you answer that question? I was going to answer, but I'm going right. to give you Go ahead, Job. A Tom. First team or defense. Well, so you, you can keep the award because by the rules of NBA history, a large, massive percentage of the defensive player award goes to a big man. It is a big man's award. The outliers are the perimeter players who get said award. Pippa wasn't going to get that. That's fine. You know what I'm saying? But oh, and to that, add to, well, hold on one second. And he played in the era, I guess you can say he had a team. He played, you know, David Robinson, uh, Barry Patrick, Payton, Ewing. All, Patrick Ewing, all those other guys. True. But Gary so, Payton was able to get one during that same era. Go ahead, John. This is why, hey. you know, lis listening is fundamental, <laughs> much like reading. Perimeter <laughs> players getting the award are outliers. Say it with me right now. Outliers. Okay? First time all defense eight times, right? Again, and this is the problem when we talk about points per games, all of these foolish arguments that we throw out basketball. Mike over here loves to talk about basketball and elevation. Again, when you when you deal with special circumstances, like playing with a Michael Jordan, not playing with Mark Jackson and, and Rick Smith. That's Michael the Jordan. Baby. I, exactly, That's the difference. exactly. Make my point for me, Mike. So uh, my man's a number one Mike. guy. That's Thank a number you. two. That's the difference. And, and they that's, build franchises behind my man. That's, that's not that's, Scottie Pippen. That's the difference. And they want nothing. Moving along. We're different. We Moving went to the finals, baby. It's okay, different. Mike, Mike, Mike. Let him finish. Yeah, I don't want to. I'm, I'm just saying the difference is. We talking different. The difference is, is that one is a one and a two. Doesn't mean that the two in this scenario isn't a superstar. We're talking about elevating points per game. Pippen elevated his role in the playoffs. You couldn't do nothing. It's legendary stories of not being able to deal with the Bulls perimeter defense spearheaded by Scottie Pippen. And if you want Thank to talk you. about points per game, I, I got Hunter. the points in front of me. Shout out to all you number guys out here. In the 91 finals, this non-superstar averaged 21, 6, 9, 1, and 3. That's what not a superstar. Average? The 92 and 13 Let me finish. in the closing game, by the way. Let game 5. The 92 Thank five. you. Scottie Pippen, 21 points a game, seven assists, eight rebounds, a steal, a block. This is, this is a, a non-superstar. And if yeah, those are all-star numbers. And if, and if, and if, and if, this is 
You know, this is the problem. Y'all keep looking at basketball from a today perspective and we forget <laughs> pace. No. Look at the scores, guys. You mean to tell me that scores in the 80s, you had two guys accounting for 65% Question. of the offense and one of those two guys is not a superstar? Knock it the hell off. Keep your opinions. I don't give a and, heck and that, Okay, okay, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, oh, Jeff. Come to me now. Jeff, come hold on. Me. I'm going to come to you. Jeff, 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 go ahead. Jeff, you had a point to add. To, you when, point to yes. I'm gonna, I brought this. I, I thought about this. When they when they formed the Dream Team and you had 11 alphas on the team, who was the number one on that team? It was Ooh. Michael Jordan. That didn't take away from what those other guys did. It was the fact that Michael Jordan was the alpha of alphas. Nobody yeah. questions who Michael Jordan is. Nobody questions yeah. his right. greatness. And, and so Pippen Scottie did make Pippen, that team, too. He did make that jo- a dream team, too. Yes, yeah, exactly. Was Reggie? Was Reggie? Was that's a super point. Point. No, Reggie, no, Reggie didn't, didn't make that team. Oh, okay. No, Reggie didn't make that dream team. He's a shooting guard. He's a shooting guard. He's not going to make it over Michael Jordan. Hello, he's a shooting guard. Chris Mullen is a shooting guard, too, no? No, 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 Mike, Mike, go ahead. Go ahead, Mike. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, so, the reason, so the reason I made my point is because we're talk we're we're operating on two different wavelengths. Cause see, when we talk about superstars, we're talking about franchise players. We're not no, talking no, about no, you're not. Uh, no, you're, no not. you're not. Or like, Stop we're not talking about me. like guys that average twenty when the their best player was averaging thirty five. Like we, there's a level to this. Like MJ's averaging thirty five, he's averaging twenty, and you're like, oh, well, it's one eight and one eighty eight. What are you talking about? The point is, so the point is with Reggie Miller, Bro, you have like, point, dude, shoot, yo, why is he on this panel? He has the worst guys around team. Reggie Miller. Who is the second best guy around Scotty Pippen? Was Rick they Smith. Said, Get they out of here, man. You hold Michael Jordan's pocket. That's what you do. You hold Michael Jordan's pocket. That's what you do. The same way the franchise player. It's a different the same, the same way that Shaq that Kobe did it for Shaq. What you talking about? No, but Kobe that last game. no Kobe that last championship, one was averaging 29, one was averaging 28. It's different. <laughs> There's a different like, level. Okay, 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 okay. Let's get some. Okay, guys, let's calm down. And this is why let's restore some order. Go, go, go ahead, go ahead, John. I just want to respond to this. And this is why I keep saying listening is fundamental. Clearly, I started my piece off by saying that the 99 2000 Lakers championship was the, uh, a sheer copy of the Bulls' run with Kobe in the Pippen role. Shake your head, Mike. It's a fact. Look at the yeah, numbers. Yeah, Sherry picked numbers. one year yeah, out of three numbers. championships. This is Wait, hold on, hold on. Sherry okay, hold on. so let me ask. Pick it. I'm trying to okay, so let me ask this. Come out. out. It was a Come blueprint, out. you goof. No, 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 okay. So let me ask no. this question though. Oh there's that God. okay, there's the narrative. Just, no, just okay. because you y'all don't have to have like oh, guys. Guys, 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 listen. Guys, 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 listen. guys, guys, listen. guys, guys, guys. No, once you get order, I'm gonna shut down that whole uh shot okay, thing. So le- okay, so let me ahead. ask this. Let me ask this argument though. A lot of people say in favor of Pippen, Jordan did not win his six championships without Pippen. And, and he, he, he also he didn't want them without Steve Kerr. No, so, that's, but listen, but listen, every but listen, team though. needs a role player. Actually, he did. Jordan. What are you talking about, Mike? Like, okay. oh, every team that's needs that's somebody. That's okay, that's okay. That's Jeff, you had a point to make. I'm Jeff. gonna, I'm gonna shut down that whole uh, Kobe thing right there. Why did Kobe want Shaq out of, out of L.A.? Because he, he did not want to be in the shadow of Shaquille O'Neal. So how is it one A, one B? If Shaq is the alpha. And Kobe wants him out. Why? Because Kobe wanted to be the alpha. Because he knew Kobe he could did be not the want team. to be the role player. Because Your he whole knew entire he could. argument is, is what? But he knew he could, though. Scottie Pippen never proved to us never. he could lead a team to anything. Never. Never. Okay, when you spend your prime with Jordan. Like, exactly. You when you want to be a water boy, you can't be a water boy. You're a water boy. Be a water boy. Yeah, Scottie Pippen was never yeah, a water boy. He made no that sense. Okay. Sense. You make okay. no sense. Okay. Hold on. Commissioner's been waiting. Commissioner's been waiting. Commissioner, go ahead. Don't compare him to Tyson. This is another narrative I just don't like. Okay, the year after, the first year that Jordan left, they went 55-27, right? Of course, they were going to make the playoffs. No one said they weren't going to make the playoffs. They were a three-time championship team. They had everybody back, plus they added Tony Kukoc and Pete Myers. 
and he took him to the second round. <laughs> what? So you're <laughs> making Pippen's argument for him? Right. You're making an argument for him. That was the year he, would, he didn't want to go back in the game because they gave Tony Kukos the winning <laughs> shot. Yeah, yeah. 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 Now that's the game he was crying, right? That's the year he was crying. All right, keep going. Wait a second, wait a second. That year, yeah. That's the same year, right? Three time championship team, a defending three-time championship team who only lost one player, added Tony Kukoc and Pete Myers to the sec- semifinals. Who was, like, the, who was the leader of the team again? Okay, but you know... But, Second but you MVP know, votes? But you know the what? The non-superstar Scottie Pippen. Huh? But you know what? But again, but again, okay, but, but again, Ray, but then think about this, and this is an objective perspective here. When you take a superstar off a team, look at all the, in the history, when they take superstars, how well do they do? When Shaq left the Magic, how well did they do? When uh, LeBron left Cleveland the first time, how well did they do after? Can I answer we have, that? To, we have to look at Can when you take that? superstars Can off teams, that? how well Can did I they do? That call? Go ahead, Mike. Was when so perfect example? You said LeBron when he left Cleveland. What was the team after he left? Did everybody stay there? Ray's point is that everybody stayed there and they added pieces. When LeBron left Cleveland, nobody was there anymore. Augustus retired. Antoine Jameson got traded. Mo Williams, like people yes, left. Yes, but Kukoc was a rookie though that year. You're gonna make no, sure like Kukoc Paul, you're a, missing the point. A, the point is I'm, that the team is intact. You just take one player off. It, every time people say that about LeBron's teams, it's not the exact same team. The, the, the whole team changes. Look the at the franchise beautiful. changes. Look at, so look that's at the what beautiful. happens. But that's not an argument Jordan, anyway. Hey, Job, go ahead. Go ahead, Job. Can I hear the names that got added after Jordan left one more time? It was Pete Myers and Tony Kukoc. <laughs> <laughs> hey, are you Pete Myers and Tony Kukoc made so much much not a superstar, right? <laughs> you guys up. make me sick. <laughs> <laughs> You see, I'm wearing my boots, by the way. Ray, 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 you my man. Ray, you my man, but I'm not going to take that from you. I'm sorry, man. I can't, I can't take that. I can't take Tony Kukos. Scottie Pippen's not a superstar. Who messed me up, Commissioner Ray? The best play. You know what? Back in the 90s, the best all-around play in the NBA. Okay, go ahead. Wait, wait, hold on. Go ahead, Ray. Go ahead, Ray. Finish up your point. I didn't hear you. Say it again. My fault, bro. Go ahead, bro. Cook. What's that? Go ahead, bro. No. I, I didn't realize you were we talking about point. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's like, here's my point. It's like when, I'm going to give it out. It's like when Tom Brady got injured after leading a team 18 and 0. All Matt Castle had to do was just manage the team. That's not how he basketball works, bro. With an undefeated team. That's pretty much what Scottie Pippen did. He went a three time championship team that already had the system in place, it's lost nice. one person. Right. Every Everybody just stepped up, and he took them to the second round in the playoffs. Everybody knew they were going to make the playoffs, but right. no one, absolutely no one. I'm a Bulls fan. I knew they weren't winning the championship, and they, but Ray, they, didn't, do anything, they didn't do anything that I, I didn't expect them to do. But, Ray, no. again, you cannot replace Michael Jordan with Tony Kukoc is some schmeg. I'm, and not, I'm not saying that. I'm not <laughs> it's just the system. They're gonna, you don't win 55 games without Michael Jordan, and it's just the system. You got to no. have players. It's the Mike, NBA. You need players, bro. Scotty Pippen is one of the best all-around players in the about? history of basketball. What are you so talking how, about? How, he is how, a great how, all-around how does player. Let, let, let Reggie Miller have, have Scotty Pippen. Like, <laughs> even the baby, even the baby's tired of these. these <laughs> he's, he's, he's <laughs> one child. That's what she said. Daddy, stop baby, it. Baby like, Dad, okay, stop Daddy, cut it out. Okay, okay. So, so let me get around. Let, let me get around to final takes here to wrap up. Mike, what's your final take on the star superstar for Scottie Pippen? Scottie <sighs> Pippen, like some people had when they was kids, like they was never the man, so they was always a number two. And so they resonated with Scottie Pippen and they was like, you know, I'm him. And so because of that, they elevated him to being the guy when he never was the guy. He was a very Nobody good, questioned. he was a very good take. number two guy. And that's what's, yo, it's nothing wrong with being a star. Superstars, it's an elite category, franchise players. Scottie Pippen was never that. And that's okay. It's good to be Robin when you know you got a Batman. So it's all right, man. He's not uh, a superstar. Jeff, Jeff, final comments here. Your, your, your take, final floor. Anything you want to say? I, I can't listen to this nonsense anymore. Just, the, just because he played with the ultimate alpha doesn't take away from his superstar status. The guy was the best, all one of the best all-around players in the league for a long time. How he goes from, how he's, uh, he's only two when... 
Kobe's one A, it's the or one B. The whole co- the whole conversation is ridiculous. But y'all entitled to your opinions. My final take: Scottie Pippen, super star. Enough of you. Top five player all time, right? Top five all time. At yeah. his position, yes. No, no all def- time. Okay, well, you know what, guys? Guys, listen, we have a Mount Rushmore for the NBA that's looming for the fall. That's when we'll debate that Mount Rushmore season. We'll select. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me do position. the small forward so I can listen to the nonsense. No, no you're people. going to put Scottie Pippen, greatest point guard ever, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> commissioner, forward, yes. Commissioner, uh, final take. Yeah, here, commissioner, man, final take. Reggie. Commissioner, final take. Look, man, I'm a Bulls fan. You know what I'm saying? I've seen it. I, do I, this. I, I watched the games. You know what I'm saying? Like, I knew what Scottie Pippen was, and I'm tired of people trying to elevate him into something that he's not. He's an all-star. There's nothing wrong with being an all-star. He's a Hall of Famer, a great player. We don't win six chips without Scottie Pippen. I have never that I have never said that we, we do or anything like that. But he's not he's not a superstar. He's never been relied on to at that moment to carry wow. it to do something. He's just an all-star. It's nothing wrong with that. Just accept it. Like Bulls fans, stop it. Stop the nonsense. It's okay. okay. John, yeah, John, final thoughts, brother. Final <laughs> thoughts here. I can't, I can't get your mic. Your mic is out, homie. Again, man. All the commission. Can you hear me? Am I yes, here? I can hear you. Yeah, it's, it's low, but I can hear you. Is a wig, some big glasses, and a banana, and he'd be the hater from Belly. Because you. <laughs> <laughs> you tapped out, bro. I can't hear you, homie. See. I'm going to wait for you to come back in. I'm going to wait for you to come back in. Hold on. I'm going to wait for him to come back in. He's going to dial out. It's almost like he got muted. We don't want to hear that. No, no, it's not true. But listen, this debate has been going on and on. It's never going to end. People are going (laughs) to love Scottie Pippen. They're going to hate Scottie Pippen. Some people agree. Some people do. Nobody hates Scottie Pippen. No No one hates him. No one hates him. We just don't care. But but look, listen, based off the group, a lot of people believe that, again, like Ray said, that they're elevating to be something that he's not. On the contrary, people believe that, you know, Jordan needed Scottie Pippen to win those championships. And, and, those are words out of Michael Jordan's mouth, by the way. Players, those are Paul, words out of Michael Jordan's alone? mouth. Stop. Stop. Those, players, those are words. Another player. Listen, listen, listen. So? He did those say are that. words Jordan out did. of the greatest player's mouth. Ooh, you let me don't ask say a question. Michael Jordan's name without Scottie Pippen. Is, is Joe and Dumas a superstar? He's, he's just an all-star. Give me a break. Is dude. Joe Dumas a superstar? Jeff, <laughs> is Joe Dumas a superstar? Is Joe Dumas a superstar? No. Why not? He won two chips. He did the same thing Scottie Pippen did, and he was a finals MVP. Why not? <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Good night. Ray, 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 I can't Good hear night. you, bro. <laughs> Good night. Joe Dumars. <laughs> as if Joe Dumars is ever as good as Scottie Pippen. Cut the Joe, nonsense, please. D- good night. Joe Dumars a finals MVP. Good night. So is Chauncey Billups. What's your point? Good night. Good night. What's your point? He did the same role Scottie Pippen did for the Pistons. He did the same thing. Average 20, was in the playoffs, was Ray. the number two with Isaiah Thomas, and he's a superstar. I'm not saying he wasn't a number two. Nobody's arguing. You're arguing whether or not he was a star or a superstar. Nobody yes, was Joe Dumas, 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 Dumas. But you know Enough. what? But you know what? Listen, he did. Scotty did carry the Bulls further than people expected him to in '94. No, he did. No, he, he did. did. He did. He did. He did. No. <laughs> did they win a chip? Carl they didn't win the chip. They, they didn't win the, the chip. They didn't. What did he do? They did what Giannis did this year. That's why Richard Jefferson said Giannis is Scotty Pippen. They did the same thing. What did he do? So Yo, y'all got me sweating in here, B. Job, can I hear you? The semifinals. Oh, Job, are you in? Enough, man. MJ had to come back. That's what it was. Job, are you here? No chips. We can't hear. Yeah, him. I can hear you. I can hear you now. To- because you love Scotty Pippen too much. Now I can cook him since he <laughs> loved. Said we can't hear him. No, you love Scotty Pippen too much. Uh, I want to hear you. <laughs> I want to hear you. The last time we can't. So oh, he came him. back. See, I thought he wasn't gonna come back. Now he came back. Am I in the building? He came back. Yeah, you're here. You're here. You're here. Go ahead, go ahead. The laptop is so crappy and it's tired of Mike Miller's nonsense, first and foremost. <laughs> Secondly, I, I don't know how all yeah. of these dudes watch the NBA, you win six championships, and you say that a guy's not a superstar. It's, it's just not possible. The role he played, the responsibilities he had, that's not Thank a superstar. You. Like how Tony Parker, that- Manu Ginobili, are they Hold superstars? on, Mike, Mike, Mike. Let the man you finish, have, please. Can I finish, bro? Because it's like you talk. My fault, people. bro. My fault, bro. You, you my man. A, my, fault, my nonsense meter has already been broken. Like, you, you, you've been talking too much. Anyway, Scottie Pippen in his era, at the pace he played at, 
did his job. If one player is dominating the possessions and the team is averaging somewhere close to 90 and the other guy is averaging 20, he's doing his job. That is a superstar. Thank Thank you. Because it's like y'all here, or y'all coming in, especially Ray. Ray, I didn't realize this. You're a hater, bro. Like, like I thought I was a hater. Anybody who gets too much praise, that bothers you. You can you, you got a trigger. You know what? He getting too much praise. So let me just bash him. How are you a Judas Bulls fan saying Pippen is not a superstar when Pippen did everything asked of him at the highest level? In the 90s, when the role, the term best all-around player was a thing, Scottie Pippen was the unanimous best all-around player for nearly a decade. Thank you. Alongside six championships. The so only you, reason Scottie Pippen is not a super is not considered defense. a superstar multiple by some because he played with Michael Jordan. Locked, That's it. Locked up multiple players in the finals. Did what he was supposed to do in and when he, Jordan was replaced by crumbs, they won 55 games when he finally had one shot to be the guy. 55 games, second in NBA voting, and a couple of bogus calls against Bozo Nation away from going to the conference finals. And you telling me replace Jordan and keep the system and he's not a superstar? You guys don't know what you're talking about. And it's sickening to listen to a Pacers fan who talks about Reggie Miller when Miller never did anything worth talking about besides playing the Knicks and he never got it done. Shout out to Jalen Rose, because the only time y'all did anything in the finals is when Jalen Rose showed up and made a difference. Tell him why you mad, son. 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 Say it with your chest. Tell him why you mad, son. You know what the next season, you know what the Bulls record was the next season before Jordan got back? They were 34 and 31. Yeah, we lost Horace Grant, by the way, just to be clear. Oh, let's, we let's, lost let's Horace keep it Grant. Honey. Uh, let's keep it on oh, honey. Listen, listen, Ray. You lost Horace uh, Grant. John, 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 oh. I got one more question for you because oh. while you were coming, while you were getting back in, they talked about Joe Dumars and they said, Was Joe Dumars a superstar? Because he has Joe, du- Joe Dumars was never what Pippen was. Stop Thank you. For the Pistons? Nonsense. No. Why are we talking to people that don't know basketball? Why? 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 Go watch, go watch your soccer. Go okay. Go watch that, man. No. Okay, okay. Okay, so job. Okay, okay, okay so job. So job, so job. We can't compare Joe Dumars to Scottie Pippen, even though Joe Dumars was Isaiah's too. And so the, was, com- and- the comparison ends with sidekick. That's it. Their roles on the floor were not the same. What exactly. They were, to, were not the same. The, the level they of winning. They were asked to do the same the thing. Same. They, they, were literally they were not. Uh, Joe Dumas was not asked to Joe Dumas was asked offense. to guard the best player Sorry. on each team. Exactly. Joe Dumas was asked to guard the best player on each team, meaning Michael Jordan. Joe Dumas was asked to Did he to run the offense? Then Joe Dumas was running point guard a lot of the time. But y'all don't know basketball. I, I'm not talking to y'all about basketball. Y'all don't know basketball. Be quiet, please. You know basketball. Y'all time. You know, you know, you know, you know, I know. Yo, go that watch French Week Soccer, Get out of here with that, man. You, Joe you, Dumas man. didn't run the offense. Joe Dumas did not grab rebounds. I understand. I understand. Let me find those MVPs, Scotty Pippen won. You know what? Let me find those MVPs, Scotty Pippen won. He played alongside Michael Jordan. He didn't win any. Mike Tyler. So how many on, did Joe Dumas win? How many did you Anybody know? Anybody so did know Chauncey Billups. What's your point? How, how many did he win? So did, so did uh, Paul Pierce. Hey, uh, listen, you, that's personal. You get guys, personal yeah, right that now. That was personal. <laughs> that was personal. <laughs> you that one that's a personal. That was personal, bro. You, you got personal. Come on. I like you, homie. Come on, my son. I like you. Man. Man. I did. I did. You I did. Let's call it what it is. one Let's call it what it is, man. Yeah, to go there. Oh, That's gonna end the show. Out. Yeah, I did. That's gonna end the show now. That's gonna Everybody watching right now, can y'all post in the comments Reggie Miller's fight? <laughs> 2000. Let me let me hear those. Super- so it's not about Reggie, man. <laughs> you man's a Hall of Famer. It's not about Reggie, man. Stop it's it. about Scotty Pippen. Listen, Stop it. I think oh, we need man. to listen, Scottie guys. Pippen, Mark Jackson, Jalen Rose, compare to them, man. Compare listen, them, guys. Man. I think we need to do another part two. This was very good. You guys, this no. is the end of the. Why do we keep trying to make Scotty Pippen something he's not? No. He's a superstar. No. No. no, no, stop it. Okay, okay, no. John, 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 you're saying you're done. No more, no more, right? No, all these sidekicks want to be super. No, like stop. No. Okay, you I'm getting the wrap up signals. This. Shout out to Ziggy Ziggy. Told me to wrap it up. Mike? No, man. All right, guys. Thank you for tuning in. 
vacuuming. Listen, man. listen, Stay thank you for soccer, tuning man. in. Listen, thank you for tuning into the sports hit list by the fans for the fans. I don't Please know what he's sure. talking about. No. Ever. Can I wrap up now? You guys done? No. Ridiculous. <laughs> no. The the final words is no. No to Ray Jarvis. No to Jay. Here, no man. to your wrap up. Shouts out to the commissioner Ray. No to everything. No. Shout nah, out to ahead, everybody. Call. 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 No more. Okay. Call. 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 As I was saying. About. Okay, as I was saying, thank you everyone for watching the Sports Hit List, Hitless Wednesdays. Make sure live at 4 o'clock we'll have something. Next week we have the, the Ju- Julian Edelman debate, which will be hosted by Ray Jarvis between Greg Polius and Marcus Lamar. I know, Mike, you don't care about the NFL. We also have uh, post games. The post games have been live. We have Hitless at night following. We have the Western Conference Finals coming up. The Eastern Conference Finals coming up. The NBA Finals are coming up. So we're going to be doing some live post games. Week one of the NFL. There's so much to talk about with sports. We have fall sports coming mm-hmm. through. Baseball playoffs are starting soon, too. So, again, please make sure you like, share, comment, subscribe. Jog, you want to throw a shout out to your podcast for the people? Shout out to the gray area. Shout out to the rap round table. Find them on both platforms Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Um, Mike don't know what he's talking about. Peace. Uh, but before we go, though, Mike, I, I want to give that. you a special shout out. Congratulations. I believe your inauguration as pastor is this weekend coming up, right? So a special yeah, shout-out to you on that installation. Yeah, Congratulations. Congratulations. You, brother, it's the same two so churches. Much. It's the same two churches, but they just want to officially, you know, do all the bells and whistles to just show the boy love. So well deserved. That well deserved on that, man. Well I've been following you. Uh, give a shout-out to your church. Give a shout-out to the people. Uh, Philadelphia SDA Church in San Antonio and Atascosa First SDA Church in Poteet, Texas, man. All right, guys, take care, and uh, please drop a comment. I know the the comments are going crazy right now, um, and I know we're going to have a a lot of posts about it, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. You're, You're listening to the Worldwide Sports Radio Network.